Okay then, so this is a, a second video of the graphics engine that I'm developing. So this is like a, a sprite based engine that's trying to be a little bit like Gale Racer or Galaxy Force or Power Drift, that kind of thing. Almost like the old Sega sprite scaling games. And this is on the Dreamcast and I showed a video of this before and I've enhanced the engine a little bit more with a, a full race track but as you can see the performance isn't great and really if I knock this back this is drawing at like 32 tiles ahead and it's it's really quick and that's fine but once you start getting up to about 96 it starts to slow down but I don't want that I want let's just whack this up to 256 Oop, I think I made the console unhappy <laughs> it's drawing too many polygons I want that I want it drawing like really far I want 256 um, polygons ahead so what do we do if this is running on like a, P a new PC then it won't matter too much because you've got the horsepower but the old Dreamcast doesn't really have the the grunt in it you know in order to do this at 30 frames a second so what I've done is this so if I hit the B button it goes into kind of wobbly vision and what this is, this is a, an algorithm which is going through the level and it's saying anything that's not within like 16 or 32 tiles ahead it degrades the image so instead of drawing every tile because if if I just whack this onto normal view and whack up the detail oh I think I've really upset the machine there then the tiles that you can see further ahead you're not if a few of them are missing you're not really going to notice it so what this does is it it gradually starts to degrade the the quality by making the far away tiles or like sprites even bigger and once it gets too big it just starts dropping the draw distance so ideally it tries to give a draw distance of 256 tiles ahead and as soon as it starts to look well crap then it drops it if that makes sense so in the top right here there's like a a flashing tile and what that is is it it's meant to be a frame rate indicator so it's green if it's 30 frames a second or above it's like a brownie grass colored if it's 25 to 30 if it's 20 to 25 it's blue and then any less than that it goes various shades of gray so the idea is that I can keep track of the frame rate and for some bizarre reason if, if you with a Dreamcast you can make it print text but if you do it in the OpenGL mode it makes a screen flicker which is a bit weird so on a PC it wouldn't be a problem you could just you know print to the the console but you don't have that on, on the Dreamcast so this is working fairly well I wouldn't say it's the frame rates perfect but it's it's averaging around you know 20 to 30 frames a second which isn't too bad uh, which is a, a big difference than you know what you get on a PC but the Dreamcast is what it is you can't really change it it's, it's a retro console I think that's almost a, a loop so what this is meant to be it's like a, a a racing track and what you've got is like a sandbank on the left and then you've got some sea or big lake rather yeah, I think I need to make this level of detail algorithm run a little bit quicker because it racks a little bit slow. So if I turn it off, just whack it up, you can see there, that's... That's... Actually, that could go a little bit higher. I don't know, it trigger's not working. It's too slow and, and that's really what I want. So what it's doing, it's almost like if you imagine having... Um, or what do they call it, mip mapping on textures. So if you use mip mapping, um, it degrades the ones above a certain distance. So if you, if you go down to this water, you see this island, if you're right on top of it, you're seeing fairly decent textures. But as soon as you start going away, it starts to degrade the image and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, which is opposite to what should have you know happen because it's further away in the distance yeah this is annoying on the right there's a this is the field of vision 
and I've got that set a little bit too low. I think I need to set that higher. Uh, but the way I had to implement this means that what the, the algorithm's very similar to what you do if you're doing ray tracing, so a game like Doom. So the advantage of that is because I've had to have the machine calculate this, then it's certainly possible to do a lighting algorithm on top of it. So you could do a headlight without too much cost on the processor, which I might do next. Uh, what else? What else? I think the other thing I can do to optimize it a little bit is if you go down here, for example, and I'll switch that into normal view. If you see that hill in front, this it, at the moment it's drawing everything behind it, so it's drawing things that you can't see, which is a bit wasteful. So the next thing to do is, and I did do this before, but I, you know, I didn't do it particularly well, and it was throwing away too much, is to say, if there's something in front, then anything of a less height, so once you get up to this point, it should be anything that's of a lower height behind it, then just discard it, so I might be able to save a few more um, polygons that way. But if you've got a scene like that, it ain't going to work because you're seeing everything. Right, I think I'll leave it there. So, I haven't added any... I suppose it's been about three days since I made the last video and I've just been working on the optimization on this. So I haven't really added any features, so there isn't really any you know, collision detection or, or really car physics or anything like that, but I don't think it's it's too far off. I, th I think the main problem has just been getting a decent draw distance because... Oh, I'll turn this off. The, the previous video was like that really and it don't cut it. I, I, I thought of, you know, a few comments that came back were, this looks like Daytona and yeah, that, that's exactly what it is and it's not <laughs> it's not good enough it needs you know you need to do something else so I think this is a a good compromise so instead of having 30 frames a second like that what you'd really want is something like that which clearly it won't do and you turn on the the field of um, field of vision level of detail mangler and uh, you get the best of both worlds so I think I'm reasonably happy with that and uh, it does pick up here and there so like these sections aren't particularly complex so the um, the quality of the image does go up a little bit and particularly when you get towards the edge of the map because you're not drawing as many tiles right I think I'll leave it there um, hopefully that's been I'm sure I've said that before <laughs> yeah hopefully that's been uh, entertaining or at least educational to an extent on uh, how to write games and, and stuff like that on the Dreamcast which is a really nice platform to develop for unfortunately not not the fastest and uh, the libraries that come with it or the homebrew ones I don't think are as fast as the official Sega ones but you know, I'm doing this legit as it were so there you go thanks for watching <laughs>